now. Time for us for the Sheriff's Sit Down, presented by our community credit union, Mace County Sheriff Casey Salisbury. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. 7.40 now and a Monday. Good to see you. And uh, last Tuesday, I think it was, was National Night Out. Do you guys do a lot of, with that? Yes. We had last Tuesday at Alderbrook, we had um, a number of uh, residents or communities within the Alderbrook community, cul-de-sacs, things yep. called, there's four of them, had large gatherings with a big picnic dinner or dinner and, and everybody brought things. Uh, so uh, Sergeant Severance and I visited out there and had a great time. It's a tremendous turnout of people from their community. And then uh, this weekend, um, we were up at Lake Cushman. And we used to go to like six different locations because all the divisions up there. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year, they started bringing everybody down and meeting at the lower lake at the picnic area. Yeah, yeah. And it was a huge turnout. It was really neat. It was uh, they have a, a big area down there, and it was full. It was fantastic. Have that many people turn out. What are those types of things? How does uh, so one? What does that mean for you guys in law enforcement to see that? type of turnout and two for the folks the residents that show up to these things just to get a better sense of like who you guys are as uh, I mean you know we talk here weekly so we know you kind of not only as the sheriff but kind of as a real person and there's a lot of folks that don't get that opportunity when they get a chance to We've meet actually you. Um since since 2007 started to do a lot of different programs in the community it was kind of an outreach that a lot of agencies done before we started moving out and going to all kinds of as you know i have that public meeting yeah. uh, the, the first thursday of every month so that's that's been going for 13 years i still have people that say they don't know about it but we have uh, you know anywhere from 35 to 60 people a month there and that's that's not bad over a 13 year period yeah. to have that program like that it's better than some service clubs get showing up for that for their meetings hmm. And so we, we have a lot of people from the community for our block watch captains and things from the different areas of our community that show up at that. And then we've been doing the national night out for quite some time. Um, a big difference it made for us a few years ago is um, we had a resident deputy for that Lake Cushman area and they actually helped pay part of a contract to pay a deputy to be up there part time. But when I had come back here in 2007, um, that was a tremendously stressed area for, for all kinds of problems up there. You have people running around on off-road vehicles and driving across mm -hmm. a golf course and just horsing around doing different things up there. And and many years ago, there didn't used to be full-time resident as many full-time residents. It used to be just a summer hangout. Now there's a lot more full-timers. So uh, uh, Deputy Reed went up there as our resident deputy and really put the kibosh on a lot of stuff uh, that first couple of years. And we'd have these these national night out, so the neighbors get to know each other you know, down the road from or in their cul-de-sac. So they kind of know who's coming and going in their neighborhood and they can report crimes into our block watch captains. And it really curbed a lot of issues up there. Um, now it's nice, it, 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 we know a lot of people up there really well because we see them all the time. But um, it, it's worked out really well for us. And in the community, if they're a new person into the community, you get to know who their neighbors are, kind of who comes and goes in the area and what's going on in, in the areas. And it, it really helps us out. And it, it's been a tremendous benefit to the community. When you see, and I'm going to try to compare this to um, like uh, your prescription drop off and your prescription release here. So when you see folks that go and take their prescription medications that have expired or whatever, and they put it into the proper drop boxes, right? Those are the folks that know about the program and they know how to use the program. And they are oftentimes the folks who are on the right side of the law, if you will. But the people who may not use those drop offs uh, as they should, and conversely, neighborhoods that you would like to get involved with but don't go to, do you see any, I mean, the people that welcome you into these neighborhoods after some, some years of work are folks that are probably mon self-monitoring what's going on around their neighborhoods pretty well. The, the neighborhoods that you don't do these national night outs, are they more kind of problem neighborhoods? You know what I'm trying to say here, Spencer? You know what yeah, I'm trying to say I, here? Yeah, I understand what you're saying. And we've, we've worked with um, all kinds of different communities to have block watch captains in different areas, and not all of them have necessarily national night out. We have one of our other um, communities, they have a... Um, for their own community, it hasn't really have anything to do with law enforcement initially. They have their own community meetings and they invite us out there, so it's not necessarily a national night out. Yeah. But obviously the people that are involved and, and want to know what's going on in their communities and want to take the time to 
help make their communities more secure in those things obviously those neighborhoods are going to do a lot better at sure. it because they are involved it's it's like anything else if you're the person that takes care of the maintenance on your car and replaces your tires all the time and keeps up on things generally generally you're motoring along pretty well yeah you just let everything go and 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 don't put any effort into it um it's probably not going to run as well so okay. it works real well in, in those neighborhoods and and we have that for different areas and um, we have timberlakes community we were, we've been out there for their community programs with deputies signed out there and so those people that have gotten involved like that and in, in in those larger communities it really does help the other piece that's really nice and not to discredit them because they're great people and great friends of mine but there's a difference between a county around our size than other other counties and some of the surrounding counties you know I, and I know all of them really well but for the king county sheriff to go out and and visit communities and actually know a lot of people it's really difficult when you have that many people hmm, you're sure, not going to sure. get out and see them all in king county we're, we're here, it's interesting, having those other sheriffs have come in for our morning breakfast and things. Yeah. And they say, gosh, you, you know all these people in your community. I mean, you really know them, and they know you. It's a lot different in a little bit smaller county because you do get out and see these things in these different areas of the community, and, and you do run into people at the store as much. When you have you know, millions of people in your community, you're just not seeing them yeah. all. And yeah. It's been a real benefit to us. Kind of on a national thing, I'd like to pick your brain on the whole um, Jeffrey Epstein thing in terms of, like, someone being incarcerated they say he was taken off the suicide watch like at the end of july so he wasn't on like the 24 7 suicide watch like he had been on but how does this still happen how do people how do cellmates end up with things that could potentially lead to them taking their own lives I, I, they said that his sheets were made out of like paper tissue um there's nothing you can secure anything to the ceiling with i mean i just i don't understand how these things happen what, what's your experience with people who are incarcerated in terms of uh, I'm assuming it's like the TV shows right you take their shoelaces you take their belts I mean you take away certain things that they can't have with them in a cell because it would pose a danger not only to themselves but to prison yeah, guards it's, and it's the really people challenging the Chief Hansen's probably a better one to do that having uh, run a, a, an institution for over 30 years yeah but he, as long as he's been dealing with that not necessarily sheriff all those years but even the last 15 years it seems as though that you can you, you can take away as many things as you can take away and you would be surprised at how inventive people are I mean you read about um, people escaping out of things and how does that happen how do they figure a way out like when a you, plastic spoon scraping yeah, against the wall for yeah when you've 10 got years all day to sit there and think about it there's all kinds of different things and people get determined enough to do something and 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 unfortunately you know those things can it, it does happen in institutions all over the place and you do your cell checks and do your things and I'm sure that in in a, in a federal institution they probably have a tremendous uh, you know camera system they check to see if you've done your your um, cell checks and those things you're checking those things you know uh, at, at those time increments all the time but from the last time you check to the next time it doesn't take long to harm yourself mm. and you know certain cells are designed with less things in them and and things like that it's just like people ask us all the time uh, you know well gosh how did they get that into the jail well, you'd be amazed You'd be absolutely amazed at how people try to smuggle things into the jail and and, wow. uh, and where they put it to get to get it into the jail. And uh, we, we'd sit for hours and talk about things like that. But it, it's you know it's unfortunate circumstances because when somebody really wants to harm themselves, you're doing everything you can to to, to prevent that from happening and to take good care of people um, while they're in the institution but people come to us with all kinds of problems tremendous problems or in the system it makes it very difficult to fix everybody's problems you know so I don't know it, it, they'll they'll do a huge investigation on it and, and oh yeah they say why. one of the guards wasn't even a guard like he wasn't like a, a prison guard that wasn't like their actual occupation which I'm thinking to myself you have such a high profile guy like this you would think they said one sure guy was on five days of overtime and well and there's there's another one. I mean, we go back to what we've been talking about. What's happened to us lately is enough people. And if you're not staffing one, there's a big one for us. You know, you've got people in there that are working, 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 working. And that's why we lowered that uh, that lid on the jail. That, that, because you don't have enough staff to watch all these people all the time. And, and people are tired. They're always working overtime. That's part of the reason we'd ask for staffing issues. That's a, that's a great segue into that one for us, but yeah. it's that way. Um, it, it's it's a difficult problem, and it's not just here. It's 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 all over the country. I I think because I think sometimes, and I I say this kindly to them, corrections officers and in the corrections part of our communities are kind of like the silent service. 
You know, as long as people don't see it and it's out of mind, they really don't care until something happens to them or their family. Then it becomes an issue. But you go out and you ask to, to help take care of these things in the community, and eh, I don't really see that. It's not something I, I mean, how many people have we actually have come down to the jail and walk through and see what it's like? No, not many. Done that. So you can kind of understand there's a lot of stuff going on in there. The uh, election was last Friday, or last Tuesday, I guess, and we saw the numbers. And although not certified, doesn't look likely that sales and use tax no, thing went through. What no, do you think? No, it didn't even, well, the numbers I saw didn't even It was 60 close. 40, something like well, that. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's a choice. And I made a comment to the um, uh, somebody else, I think a newspaper or something about that. And I guess what I was bothered by is I get all these calls saying, oh, are you upset? Are you disappointed? Are you mad? No, it's not my choice. It's a choice of the citizens. If they're satisfied with the way things are and they don't want to pay for more and are okay with 300 people a month not being arrested, that's a community choice. Now, that's not, it wasn't my measure to run that. It wasn't Chief Moody's measure to run that. Did we support it? Yes. Would it have helped out uh, in public safety? Yes. But people apparently weren't convinces that's what they need for the community and we move on and and we're very fortunate I said this to the other group I think we're so fortunate to live where we live that we have the right of choice and a right to vote and if people have expressed themselves and you move on but um, as far as me personally my only concern is one day I won't be the sheriff and this will set us years behind to move it again and I'll be a citizen of the community that might be calling for that deputy or and may not have be there to respond you know, and those are the kind of things. With the other piece is, is that the other communities around us, everybody always wants to compare us. Well, they have this and they have this. They're also passing those measures in their community. Mm-hmm. That's why they have those things, and it's your choice to either have those or not have them. And so, um, I'm just. I always think to myself, knowing some folks that have been in other countries and lived in other countries, and in other places, that we are so fortunate to be in a place where we do have that that choice and that that chance to vote and when the, the, the people have spoken and given their answer. And um, I think the commission uh, put this together. They did, they did an excellent job. They really worked hard on this uh, to put that together. And it wasn't law enforcement putting it together. It was the commission putting this together. I thought they did a very good job of trying to make it for dedicated funding and putting it in the right places. And um, uh, I've heard, I haven't spoken to him directly, I, Commissioner Schutte uh, uh, had given a, an answer that, you know, he's going to, work to try something else to, to keep moving in the system and that's all we can do but that's it's just the way it goes yeah. you have a democratic system mason county sheriff casey salisbury sheriff sit down this day and every time we visit is presented by our community credit union thank you so much sir thank you good to see thank you, you.